Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing on our installation of apps on our home server. Today we're going to be installing OwnCloud. It is a Dropbox-like replacement where you can upload files to your server and access them from anywhere, from any computer connected to the internet. OwnCloud is different than Dropbox or other web applications like Google Drive or OneDrive because of the fact that there is no limit except for whatever limit you have on your home server. So we're going to dive right into installing this on our home server. If you've missed the first two episodes of installing a home server, go ahead and click on the annotations on your screen. And apart from that, we're going to dive right in. We are currently at OwnCloud's homepage and at the top right corner, you will immediately see the download button. Go ahead and click that and it'll take me to where I can download and install the OwnCloud server. This is the one that I'm looking for. I want the one where on the home server, it has the server application so that it can manage all the different files. If I scroll down, I will also see that there is a desktop client so this is if I had a laptop, another computer that I want to sync to the server, I can download and install that on another computer so that that computer can sync with the files from the server. In addition, there is also mobile apps as well as methods of integrating OwnCloud into other third-party applications. The mobile apps, there's the Apple App Store and the Google Play, and both of those once again allow you to access these files from a mobile device. We want to go ahead and install the packages. This will be the easiest one to do. So when we go ahead and click on that, we will then get a pop-up. This particular pop-up will just give us information of whether or not our operating system will be able to deploy these packages, make the installations easier. You will notice that Ubuntu is one of the particular options, which then makes it so that we don't have to worry about too much code. Go ahead and click continue, and that will take us to where we get the instructions of installing OwnCloud server onto our home server. So on the next page, this is just like when we were installing the no IP client, where we have to insert a little bit of code. We want to find the Ubuntu 14.04 because that is the operating system that we installed. The small X in front of it is insignificant. It's for the other versions of Ubuntu. So just like before, we have to open up Terminal. And in Terminal, all we have to do is copy and paste line by line the different commands. So we're going to start with the first one. And once again, all we have to do is copy. So right click Copy. And then in Terminal, just as a reminder, in Ubuntu, you have to right click and then select paste. You cannot go control V, the keyboard shortcut. It doesn't work. And we'll ask for our administrative password. We'll go ahead and type that in. And then there we go. Now, the strange thing is that the instructions here aren't in order. We have to go and skip to the second section to continue on with our steps. So we'll go ahead, skip to that second section, copy that particular line. and paste that into our terminal. I'm not sure why they chose to do it in this particular order, but if you do it step by step, it unfortunately does fail. So do do this section immediately after the first section, the first line of the previous section. So now that we've done these two lines, we can go back to the first section and finish up with copy and pasting the last two lines. You may choose to just type these into terminal as well, just because they are quite short. But then again, it's really up to you. If you copy and paste, then there's less likely a chance of having a typing error. And then it's just more simple for the actual operation of installing the, the software. So there's a lot of lines of text, that's okay. It's just updating 
don't be afraid whenever there's lots of text like that. It's normal for this terminal inside Ubuntu. So now we just need to do our very last line. This will install own cloud. And so our last copy and paste. And this time when it finishes, it's going to ask us, do we want to do this operation? We just need to hit enter and then it will keep doing these lines of text. Now, because it is installing other things, we will get this page, which asks us to put a password for the root user of MySQL. This is a database, own cloud needs it. It's automatically being installed, but you need to put in a password and then confirm the password on this particular screen before it will continue onwards. So we'll let it keep running, depending on the speed of your computer will depend on how quickly the installation takes this computer because of the fact that it's not the fastest, it takes a little bit longer, but I've just sped up this particular section so that it's only 30 seconds instead of the four to five minutes it took in real time. So as this is finishing up, once all the text has stopped moving and there isn't any blatant errors, then we're able to move onwards. So here we're at the end. We're just ready to test out our system. So we can now go back to our web browser and type in our dynamic DNS that we set up in our last video. And we just need to append at the end forward slash own cloud. Once we do that, it will take us to our newly installed software. Unfortunately, there is a small thing we need to fix, and this is just one additional line inside terminal that we have to type out in order for this to work. So we'll just type out, this link will also be in the tutorial below. It's just uh, to give ownership to the user that does the web processing. So it's just a simple line. We'll have to type this out manually or copy it from the tutorial and paste it in. You may also need to put in your password for your user once more. And then when you're done, we can just go back to the web browser, hit refresh, and now we're good to go. It'll ask for us to put in a username and password. So I'm just gonna do Mike, put in a password. And then the next section, we need to choose our database. I mentioned that it does already automatically install a database. We need to select that now. So we'll go ahead and click the storage and database drop-down menu. And from there, we will choose the center one, MySQL or Maria database. Here we put in our database user. The default is root. If you are more advanced, you probably want to create your own Use new user in MySQL, but we'll use the default and we'll give it uh, its own database. We just called it own cloud. You can call it whatever you want. From there, after we click finish, it's going to finish up. And here we are in our own cloud environment. There's a pop up that gives us a welcome. It shows us what apps and softwares we can install, as well as different links to be able to connect things like our calendar or our contacts from Outlook to own cloud as well. We can also access files from WebDAV. That's something we don't need to worry about here. And here's our interface. We can see we have folders, we have files, and then the top left is a menu in which we can select uh, the files, the activity, the picture, and there's also apps that we can add on. So a calendar, a task list, those things can be accessible from there. In the top right drop down menu, that's where we can log out. So I'm just going to go ahead and log out and log back in just to show that once this is set up, all we have to do is go to this web address, log in, and we'll always have access to our files that we upload here in own cloud. Here is the upload button. We just need to click it, find our files and away we go. From here, I also want to just show how we would access this from another computer. So the beauty of this is that it's not just this computer. We're gonna to go to a Windows machine and then access it from there as well. Here we are at a Windows machine. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Google Chrome. And from there, once again, we just type in our web address. 
for our own cloud environment and then from there be able to log in and have access to all our files. So here we don't have those limits like Dropbox, like Google Drive or OneDrive. As long as we have storage in our home server, we will be able to access that from here. So there I go, I've typed in my web address. I'm just typing in my login information. And here we are back in the same environment on a Windows computer, any type of computer. We could do this on a Mac as well and it'd work just fine and we can access any files here. In future videos, I may also show how we can set up the desktop client or some of the web apps in Android or iOS. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, see you.